state and uh, uh, thanking Monsignor Gillis from the very bottom of my heart for the good job that he has done in the time that uh, the sea has been vacant here in La Crosse and uh, certainly thanks for uh, keeping, keeping the, the ship of state afloat and floating in the right direction. Uh, uh, Archbishop Lestecki certainly left a very, very fine operation here in, uh, in La Crosse. And uh, once again, Monsignor Gillis has, uh, has been an outstanding leader and, uh, and a fine administrator. I know how that is. And, uh, so, uh, so in having to do it twice, it's not necessarily uh, any any kind of uh, uh, easy thing. So thanks again, Monsignor. And dear friends, good morning. It's so nice to be with you, and uh, I'm a, a very very happy that so many of the priests of the diocese are here today and uh, so many of you are able to uh, uh, take advantage of the splendid weather <laughs> and come out and, and be with us this morning. I am profoundly humbled and yet thoroughly exuberant to have been chosen as the Bishop of the Cross. I extend my sincere gratitude and my fidelity to His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI for selecting me as Bishop of this most beautiful part of the Lord's Vineyard. As a semi-active Cubs fan, <laughs> I have grown up hearing commercials about local brews with pure artesian waters made here in God's country. Little did I ever dream that I would be the bishop of God's country. <laughs> but God's country it is. And the announcement of a new bishop for any diocese is cause for rejoicing and an opportunity for the local church to gather together in celebration of our unity and our identity with the mission of Jesus Christ. I give thanks certainly for my predecessor here in La Crosse, Archbishop Jerome Lestecki of Milwaukee, whom I highly regard as a brother bishop and a trusted friend. I am grateful to God for the gift of faith that has matured in my life over the years and has developed into a relationship with Jesus Christ. This relationship has given me a great love for his church and a deep desire to serve his people. I have been a priest for 33 of my almost 60 years of life. And I have enjoyed every day, every year. I am grateful to so many friends as well as to my family who have contributed to that joy and have been instrumental along the journey. As the bishop of this diocese, I look forward to sharing a life of faith with all of you. I set forth as the centerpiece of my ministry the words of Jesus that encourage us to seek First, the kingdom of God. My ministry among you would be meaningless if I didn't call you beyond this world and through this world into the next, the kingdom of God. I look forward to working with my brother priests as we celebrate the life of faith and announce the word and celebrate the sacrament and the good news of Jesus Christ. While speaking about priests, today could not go any further without acknowledging the fact that it is the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and we remind ourselves of the words of Jesus that lead us to evaluate all things in relation to our heart's desire. Where our treasure is, there will our hearts be. Thus, our daily actions and our decisions must become the means by which we clearly choose Jesus Christ. He is the only rest for the weary heart. St. Augustine reminds us that our hearts cannot truly rest 
until they rest in Jesus. He loves us, and he has given himself for us. Today, as the year for priests winds down, we honor the heart of Jesus expressed in the ministry of the priest. I truly look forward to my collaboration and ministry with our good and holy priests. On this day of prayer for the sanctification for priests, I have remembered you specifically, brothers, at the Mass, which I celebrated this morning, and I pray with you for the good works which, which God will allow us to accomplish together and for this diocese. I hope to see faith formation as another set stone for my ministry in the diocese. Through existing educational ministries, our Catholic schools, religious education programs, adult faith formation programs, and various kinds of study, we can encourage work and, and increase the emphasis about the heritage of our living faith and the ways in which we can profess it more clearly, beautifully, in our daily lives. In short, I look forward to working with the priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and all the lay faithful of the Diocese of La Crosse as we continue to live as those called by Jesus Christ to let our light shine before our brothers and sisters so that they may see good in our actions and give honor and glory to God our Father. I ask in a special way that the prayers of the sick and homebound be offered and united with me during these days of transition and change. Your daily aches and pains, brothers and sisters, and all the suffering you endure will be a powerful arsenal of prayer for me and for this diocese. And I will definitely remember you in my prayers and in the daily celebration of the Mass. You must always be attentive to the sick. You must always be aware of the poor and the disenfranchised. You must always be aware that it was to these that Christ sent out some of his most beautiful and some of his most poignant ministry. And it is to them, and in a special way, I look forward to their prayer and to their support as I begin my ministry among you as bishop. And so without further ado, then, I would uh, be happy to respond to any of your questions or comments.